If your idea of eating raw vegetables is gnawing on a bunch of carrot sticks, this is the episode for you. Today I'm going to show you how to turn all these wonderful raw foods into delicious meals you can cook every single day. all need to eat more raw vegetables, but it can be kind of tricky. Today I'm going to show you three really cool techniques of getting more raw vegetables into your diet, simply and deliciously. We're going to start with making raw pasta. That's right. So I'm sure you may have heard of zoodles or zucchini noodles. Um, they're all the rage, uh, but they're really fantastic if you are looking to sort of transition away from a standard diet where you're eating a lot of regular white pasta. Uh, even if you're eating whole grain pasta, which is a great change, I highly encourage you to either switch to a pasta made with vegetables or even do a half-half combo. I'm going to show you how fast and easy it is to do that with actually a sweet potato as well. So this is a spiralizer. This is available at kitchen food stores and also online. Um, it comes with several blades. This one is going to be a pasta, quite fine pasta. And the way it works is once we start turning the vegetable through, it's sliced on these blades and then comes through this long one and that will create a noodle of sorts. So I slide that into there. I just need to cut off the ends of the zucchini and place it right here. This is also a really great way to get kids to eat more vegetables as well. So all I do is give it a little turn. And immediately you can see that we have this really cool noodle coming out and it's just made of zucchini. How cool is that? Go. that's it so just from this one zucchini we have a really solid serving of pasta if you don't want to eat this raw I actually really like um, stir frying this a little bit just to take the raw edge off um, it's you know a good way to sort of work your way into eating more raw zucchini um, but I'd like to show you one with sweet potato as well so choose a sweet potato that's rather large but has more or less a cylindrical shape that's pretty important and I've already given this a really good wash with my vegetable scrubber. Invest in one of these, especially if you're eating organic fruits and vegetables. Um, eating the skin is really important because that's where a lot of the nutrition is. So invest in one of those and give your veggies a really good scrub. So I'm gonna put the sweet potato quite firmly onto this because it's such a hard vegetable. I'll just make sure we're all locked into place here. amazing look what we have here just cut it off so we have beautiful green and orange pasta this is so delicious um, again if you don't want to eat it totally raw I'm gonna show you a technique when we do the kale salad on how to sort of break down some of those harder to digest fibers um, and that makes this even more palatable and delicious but I haven't mentioned you can actually make these noodles with all kinds of different vegetables beets are a really wonderful option Carrots are great, and you can even use butternut squash. Yes, you can eat that raw too. So go to your grocery store, find some nice veg, and get spiralizing. I will also mention that if you don't have a spiralizer or you can't find one, um, it's really easy to find julienne peelers or slicers at also at kitchen stores as well. And they're just a very simple blade, looks like a peeler, but it allows you to um, cut the vegetable into really long strips. And that's a wonderful stand-in or a good thing to invest in if you're not sure you wanna go all the way at the beginning with a spiralizer. So the next technique I'm very excited to show you is massaging and doesn't require any candles or Tony Braxton. You can do this however you'd like. That was a little joke. Um, so, I'm sure you've been to a restaurant and heard about massaged kale. Again, this is a really popular thing, which is great. I'm excited for that. Um, but I'm gonna show you actually how to do it in combination with a cabbage. What massaging does is it helps break down the cellulose. 
Cellulose is kind of like the bone structure of a plant. It's non-digestible fiber that passes through our digestive system relatively unchanged. And it's great because it acts like a broom in our colon, cleaning everything up, which is great. So, um, but I find that gnawing on kale just totally raw is a bit rubbery. So what massaging does, again, it breaks down that cellulose structure and it makes it really buttery and soft. It completely changes the vegetable. And I can eat a lot more kale once it's massaged. And eating a lot more kale is good for you. So we're gonna um, start with some kale here. I've already chopped up a bunch of this kale. This is dark leafy green kale, just curly kind. And then we have some lacinato kale or dino kale or Tuscan kale, it has many names. Um, the first thing to do is remove the rib from the kale. So I just do this by pulling it off just like that, very simply. Kale is really important, not just for everyone, but specifically the athlete, because it contains so much iron. And the really cool thing about this salad is that it's very iron rich, but because it also includes lemon juice, you're getting the vitamin C that you actually need to chelate or absorb non-heme iron. Non-heme iron is the kind that's found in exclusively in plants, and it's a little more difficult to absorb than the iron that we get from, say, um, animal flesh. So this is really important to include the lemon. So I sort of just bundle the kale up like this, um, and then just ribbon it. Like so. That's it. Now, the finer you go, the finer it will obviously be in the end, but you know, you don't need to be too precise with this. A rough chop is all you need. I also like using a couple kinds of kale in this salad because the colors really come together nicely. So, last but not least, we're gonna use this lovely head of red cabbage. I'm gonna slice it in half. Look at how beautiful this is. I mean, really. So I'm gonna take my mandolin. You could also do this with your knife if you like, but this tends to be really, really fast. Mandolin is another great thing to invest in. They're under $20, and I use these handheld ones because they're um, just really light and simple. Um, and it's great because they shave things so finely that it tends to make things more palatable as well, which is really important when you're eating raw vegetables. So I'm just gonna shave it like this. You can see how fast this is going, much faster than if you were to do this by hand. That looks pretty good. So, next things. I mentioned lemon juice, that's really important. Not just for the vitamin C, but also because of the taste. And what's cool about the acidity of the lemon, it also helps break down that cellulose that I was talking about. So I just removed the seeds and I'm just gonna squeeze it like this all over. There we go. And I'm actually gonna do the entire lemon because this is a lot of greens here and purples. Nice. If you get a few seeds in, that's okay too. The next thing we need is some salt. What the salt does is it not only seasons the uh, vegetables, but it also helps us um, it sort of helps macerate everything together. I'm using a flaky sea salt and I'm just gonna crush it up in my fingers like this. One thing I always tell people when cooking any kind of plant-based food is you have to season. People tend to be a little afraid of salt, but if you're using a good quality sea salt, you're actually getting a lot of very important and essential minerals from that as well. So don't fear the salt, get a good kind. Um, and you know, use it sparingly, but it's really important. Olive oil. This is the last little thing I'm going to put on here. This helps dress the salad. It also helps us um, with our fats. We really need fat in this also because the vitamins that we spoke about uh, before, A, D, E, and K, these are all fat soluble. And if we don't have fat in this recipe, we actually can't absorb those vitamins. And that's what we wanna do. So now's the fun part. Now you can dim the lights a little bit and uh, we can get massaging. And it really is a massage. So I'm gonna get in there, smoosh all these ingredients around with each other. And this takes anywhere from one to two minutes. Get intimate with the kale. Enjoy this process. 
It's really fun. This is also a really nice thing to do with kids because they love putting their hands in things. And what I also like to do once it starts to break down a little bit is actually like pick up some and like really squeeze it. And what's going to happen is the salt is going to start drawing a lot of the moisture out of the kale and that's almost going to create its own dressing. I'm telling you, it's a pretty miraculous process. So you can see how it's already changing. It's dark and shiny and it's wilting a lot. Like this bowl is going to actually transform into a lot less kale than it looked like when we started. So you can already see, I don't know if there's a little bit of liquid coming out yet. I really love doing this. It's also a little bit of a good workout. Let's see if we have any juice yet. There's a, I can feel a little bit. <laughs> anyway, so that's looking pretty good actually. You can see how the volumes change drastically. And I'm just gonna give it a little taste. Mm. It's so delicious. I'm not putting on airs here. I really would eat this entire bowl of kale. It is that delicious. I mean, if you're someone that struggles with eating greens or any kind of lettuce, this is definitely the technique you want to employ and master because one cool thing about this is you can massage a bunch of kale and actually keep it in the fridge. It'll last up to five days and it will retain that wonderful crunch, but also the tenderness of it. You might need to refresh it with a little lemon or salt or olive oil, but other than that, this is a really nice thing to do perhaps on a Sunday night, and then you're gonna have kale all ready to go all week long. The next raw vegetable prep technique I'm gonna show you is making rice. Now, obviously we're not gonna be using any grains for this, we're just using vegetables today, but this is a really cool one. So, because we're gonna try and imitate grains or rice or couscous or quinoa or whatever, we're going to need white vegetables. Today I'm going to be using parsnip and this really funky looking thing, which is a celery ac or celery root. Um, this really does taste like celery, but it almost has this potato-y flavor. It's delicious and it's really good raw, I will say. Most people end up cooking this or doing it like a potato in like a mash or roast, but I really like it raw. It has a delicate celery flavor and this kind of nice nuttiness to it as well. And it's quite sweet, to be honest. So um, I guess I'll prep this one first. Yes, it looks really scary when you pass in the grocery store, but I promise it won't jump out and bite you. It's a very gentle vegetable. So this thing is really hard to attack with a peeler. So I suggest using a good knife for this. And you wanna cut off as much flesh as possible because the roots sort of tend to like, you can see here, they sort of like squiggle around in there. It'll take a couple minutes to get all the skin off, but it's well worth the effort. This recipe is also really delicious with cauliflower. Parsley root is a good option. Really any white vegetable. And of course you could use carrot or something if you like. But if again, if you are trying to imitate a grain or trick someone you love, um, then using a white vegetable will definitely be more convincing than a purple one, for instance. So that looks pretty good. There's a little knob down here. There, awesome. So I'm just gonna put this to the side and we need to actually cut this into chunks because we're going to use the food processor, that's the equipment we need for this, um, but we need to give it a little bit of help first. So I'm gonna cut this into large pieces that the food processor can then work on. There we go. So you don't need to be very precise about this either. Mm, it smells so yummy. I really love this one. So into the food processor these ones go. Okay, one more. All right. Let's do the parsnip next. I've given this a good peel, and I'm just gonna give this, again, whoops, a rough chop. And then the big end here. I'll cut into quarters. Done. 
So these are gonna go in as well. The reason I'm combining vegetables is just to give it some different flavors and some nice variety. Um, again, you could also throw a cauliflower in here as well, or you can just do a single vegetable. If you're one person, a whole celery act will definitely do you for a couple days, or uh, two or three parsnips would be fine as well. So what we need next is some lemon juice. The lemon is important not only for seasoning, but also to prevent browning. And I will also point out at this point, this is a really cool way to see antioxidants in action. So vitamin C is one of the primary antioxidants in our body and our diet. Um, and if you've ever, let's say, cut open an apple, you notice how quickly it starts to brown. What's really cool is if you were to actually put lemon juice onto that apple, it would prevent it from browning. So it really actually shows how vitamin C prevents aging. It is an antioxidant. So any kind of oxidation that happens in the body, especially during um, any kind of physical activity, when we're taking in more oxygen than normal, vitamin C is really gonna help combat that free radical damage. How cool is that? So I'm gonna put a little lemon juice into here, just like that. And I've got a seed. Take that out because it tends to be a little bit bitter with the seeds. There we go. And then of course salt. Like I mentioned before, seasoning is really important. We're going to put about a teaspoon into this food processor. So that's it. The lid goes on and I'm just going to pulse it. I'm not going to blend it because I don't want it to turn into a paste. Really just trying to get all of those nice vegetables chopped up into little pieces. So that's looking really good. You can go as far with this as if you'd like. If you want to sort of imitate a couscous, you can obviously keep pulsing it. But I'm looking for kind of a rice style today. So I'll just show you a little bit. Isn't this awesome? Look how good that looks. It's really nicely chopped up and I'm just gonna give it a little taste. Mm, wow, it's so fresh with the lemon. It's perfectly seasoned and it just tastes so incredibly clean and delicious. So. I don't know about you, but I think that took a lot less time than cooking up a pot of rice, for instance, which is great. And we have a really good balance of carbohydrates that you'd get from rice, but also so many more vitamins and minerals. And it's totally raw, so we're also getting all those enzymes that help us digest the food. And that's really important, especially for the athlete whose digestive system is under a little bit more stress due to the advanced calorie needs. So eating more raw vegetables is such a great way to ease that process. So, ways you can use this rice. I really like using it in salads. Um, if you like sort of a cold rice salad or pilaf, this is a wonderful substitute. But it's also really nice, let's say if you wanna make some kind of stew or soup, you can pour that right on top. You can even steam this a little bit if you're sort of working your way into eating more raw vegetables because it makes um, a delicious steamed um, vegetable as well. You can even stir fry this like you would rice, which is super delicious and just makes a really nice, um, really nice dinner. Um, you can take this on the go if you like. This will keep for about three days as is. You might need to refresh it with a little bit of lemon juice or salt, but all in all, it will stay tasty in the fridge in a tightly sealed container. So those are your three new raw vegetable techniques. I hope I've inspired you to get into the kitchen and make some raw veggies. In our next video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own nut and seed milk.